What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. Look, I did the, the Greya VOD review, the, the first one two days ago, um, and I just want to watch more Greya. Also, uh, if you check ladder, Greya reclaimed rank one. So do you actually, he got rank one, and then I think like a game or two later, maybe like the next day he went seventh and then lost rank one, which is just the way of the world when you are uh, that high LP. If you bought four one time, you lose everything, which is, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's unfortunate. All right, so we start off here with a Nomzi. We get a, a Wukong drop here. Ooh, and that's a Nomzi too, so we can be, we're, we're almost, we're, we're one hunter away from having a great opener here with the Nomzi 2. The Wukong is a unit that I think a lot of people rate pretty highly now as just a generic early game frontliner. You don't have to play like Wukong reroll, but we can just play Nomzi with Wukong and that would be solid. Just digging for a hunter. We do pick one up in the Twitch. So yep, we're gonna hold on to this. Um, maybe a work down the line. I'm actually, ooh, this is kind of an interesting call from Greya to actually hold the, the Poppy Pair here, like rather than the Wukong. I wonder if, because because this represents seven gold, right? I wonder if there was a three gold orb drop here, if he would actually make 10 gold here and, and hold this stuff. I think that'd be really interesting to see. Um, but we don't end up getting that. Uh, and we do end up getting a Gwinsu, so our items here are fantastic to start off with. Thornplated Armor, Cauterized Dragon Spirit. Uh, I believe I talked about this. Thornplated Armor is actually a lot better now after the buff Bramble Vest. Uh, and this augment was like, like lightly takeable before, and now it's like actually quite good, especially also in a meta where there's a decent amount of AD running around. Cauterize and Dragon Spirit are just not as good as Thornplated. So we're gonna roll these two. Stars are born Pandora's items. Um, both fine augments, but I do think a Thornplated, especially onto a Wukong here, um, looks really, really nice. And uh, and you don't see here, but let me move my head. Greya is calling Jinx from this spot. He's got a Gwinsu, he's got a Wukong, um, and he has half of a Gargoyle. So I think this makes perfect sense. Uh, this will be a fun game to watch because you know, Greya is playing this uh, this Jinx reroll comp that I think it fell off really, really hard last patch. Ooh, this is a nice. This is a really, really. Uh, I, I was kind of wondering about the spot because Greya was was looking at potentially not leveling. You know, he he had. If he had won this fight without leveling, he could make 10 gold. But the problem is that it's very unlikely to win this fight if you don't level. So he's actually just going to level here second Namzi on the board just for another hunter to do extra damage, especially when we have this really, really tanky frontline in the Wukong. Now we can play double Wukong on the board. Perfect. Yep. Um, Probably better than a, a Poppy one. Well, well maybe, maybe Gray disagrees with me. Or a Poppy two. Um... Okay, maybe Poppy 2 is better than uh, than Wukong 1. It's uh, it's a hard call because Wukong on his own is just such a solid unit, but I think maybe Gray is still coming from the perspective of, I want more damage on this board. This is something that I think, you know, if you if you talk about a player and, and you say like, this is one of the best players on the server and, and they are, you know, one, one of the best, most consistent players when you look in from the perspective of a win rate and stuff like that. Um, I think little things like this, playing the second Poppy over uh, the Wukong one and just making that call of what the strongest board is here and like evaluating that, I, I think that is hugely impactful for those type of things. Um, because, you know, playing strongest board, if we fight somebody here and uh, and the Poppy two is a dip, ooh, and I think, Okay, okay, so this is uh, this is an interesting call from Greya, but I actually like this a lot as well. So I believe he does still think that the Poppy 2 is stronger than the Wukong, but his idea here is that he can now pre-level and still uh, make 10 gold uh, because he wants to hold the Wukong because he doesn't necessarily want to hold. Um, or maybe he just wants to even hold these units and he doesn't even care about the pre-leveling. He just wants to hold onto the Swain here, which he couldn't have held onto the Swain and the Wukong with the Poppy. So he makes an Econ uh, call, especially because, you know, the 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 difference between those two units is is so small, I would say. Um, okay, so we have Gargoyle open as a slam. I would, yeah, I have to imagine you're just gonna pick that up, especially with Wukong paired. If we can find a Wukong 2 anytime soon, our spot's gonna be amazing. There is a dragon in our shop, which I imagine will be the level up here, but we'll see. And I guess this was the idea behind holding Swain as well, is that theoretically you could do something like this. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it is, I would imagine it's dragon over frost, but yeah, th this was the idea. Okay, very, very nice from Greya playing a very clean early game and saying, you know, I need to hold on to the Swain because if I pick up a Shivana, then I'm going to play the Shivana and, you know, the Shivana and Swain works together. And uh, and now he gets to play a very solid early board. And ooh, is this fight? Yeah. I mean, you could make the argument that this fight is a Swain diff. And if he had not picked up Swain, he would have lost this fight. So smart stuff from Greya. Just playing a very, very clean early game and we're getting rewarded pretty hard for it. I mean, we're almost at a five streak here. A lot of new news scouting around here for whatever reason. There's just 50 new news, but okay. I mean, we still have this very, very strong Wukong. We've got the, the Wukong pair and a Gwinsu here. Zero Jinxes so far, uh, but all it takes is like one Jinx to, to, you know, make us feel really good stage three. You know, if you're a Giga High Roller, you find like a Jinx two sometime uh, before 4-1. But once again, that is a very, very high roll. So, hey, five streak, I think you absolutely take this. I'm also curious, Greya did call Jinx roll, but I wonder if 
Like you don't have to play Jinx from this spot at all. This can easily be a, a great Callista spot. You aren't, uh, he's not holding Jax, which is the only unit that you might need that you're not going to hold on to. Uh, it's a little less natural. Obviously we already have two Wukongs for Jinx roll, but I think, you know, someone as good as Greya certainly would keep the possibility open. Um, he also didn't use his remover um, here for just to get the free remover. I think his idea is that this item's always going to stay on the Nalanthi, but I wonder if we had found like a, a Jinx and wanted to move items. I wonder if that would ever be the, the call, but okay. Uh, Item-wise here, if you're playing for Jinx, I mean, you have the glove open for something like an LW. I've seen some people build Sterax Wukong. I don't think it's amazing, but it is, you know, a decent like pseudo tanked item. Um, so it is certainly something that you could look at. And yeah, he's he's going to, okay, so he's just going to slam belt and he's going to slam sword here with the idea. And oh, he's looking at even slamming IE here, which is, you know, it's not an amazing item on Jinx. It used to be a lot worse because Jinx was bugged with AD, I believe. So I'm actually down to do a quick stats check here, a little explorer real quick, a, a little Dora the Explorer here, and uh, and just look at Jinx uh, three star with three items and see how how much Delta and Finvi Edge is. Um, it's still, yeah, it's still quite positive Delta here. Um, so it's definitely much worse than something like, obviously, a Gwensu's, like a Renan's, like a Last Whisper. If you go into builds, looks like yeah, I mean, most of the builds with IE are, are quite positive. Delta and the builds without IE are much uh, much lower delta here. And so Graham makes a good call, does not slam the IE here, um, knowing that, you know, we are, we, we don't need to make it. Um, all right, Hunter Crown, Radiant Relics, Blossoming Lotus. Hunter Crown and Radiant Relics both look really, really nice to me here. Radiant Relics to get potentially, you know, an extra Jinx item. You probably can just take Hunter's Crown. It gives you Renans, which is like very, very good in slot. Uh, and obviously it allows you to play for that six Hunter. So I imagine this will be the pickup. We could even play four Hunter right now uh, on level up. So that uh, that seems really, really nice, but we'll see. Anger issues actually would be pretty fun, but obviously I think an anger issues Wukong would not be the best here. So yeah, we are gonna level up for this. We get the Renans, which is fantastic. Um, and now Greya has a, an interesting decision here where does he does he want to slam IE for streak? We just looked at the stats. IE is not great on Jinx in the stats. Um, but if we need to slam it, I, I think it is absolutely worth it. And yeah, he sees this guy who's got this Giga Scholar set up here. So he is going to make the slam here. He made the slam with the idea that he can win this fight with the slam. And it looks like he made the correct call here. And yeah, I think a uh, beautiful, beautiful slam from Gray here. I think if he had not slammed, I, he would have lost this fight. I.e. obviously not amazing on Jinx, but it can be on Namzi for now. Eventually it can move over to Jinx uh, if you know we end up hitting Jinx too. And eventually, eventually past that, we can just build a third Jinx item and throw this onto like an Olaf and it'll be perfectly fine. So this is, uh, especially because of the fact that you get these removers every single uh, minion round, I think this has kind of changed how TFT has played a decent bit. Slamming items is so much more rewarding now uh, because you don't have to worry about how I'm going to move items off this Namzi, how I'm going to move items off Jinx later. Uh, you just build these items and you feel really good about it. It's really, really influential in reroll comps like this, where you know you could slam these three items onto Jinx and, and spike really, really hard. And if you you know don't. Uh, have a remover, it'd be really, really awkward. Uh, but because you can get remover, it's it's very, very nice. Uh, looking for redemption here or uh, war mugs. Can't pick up either, sadly, because they all get taken. So we're just going to bow here. The idea being, I guess, last whisper or red buff. I, I think bow looks. I was thinking either bow or glove, uh, and he's looking at bow. I guess because it builds into both last whisper and red buff. We don't have heal cut. We don't have armor shred. Um, I would be surprised to not see a level up here when we're on such a streak. Uh, yep, I do think, and he does even, yeah, he, he takes the, uh, the, the gambit there, imagining that he can win this fight, which I think makes a lot of sense for fighting this guy who is in a, I mean, his augments are broken, broken, um, learning to spell with Seraphine, and oh my god, we lost to a level 5 Seraphine too, man, that is disgusting, <laughs> you know, 5300, ah, uh, that augment is so broken, and, and Seraphine from that, uh, yeah, <laughs> he just comes over here to yap, I mean, I'm pretty sure, uh, with better positioning that we could have won this fight uh it, it was a uh, it was really hard because we were opposite side of the the seraphine which is you know just unfortunate that you're on wrong side in a, in a spot like that but still still the spot's very good obviously we're 40 gold here level seven one thing is we did early level to seven which i think when you're playing three cost roll is a little scary just because of the fact that now every every bit of natural xp that we're getting these next few rounds is kind of being wasted because we're going to stay on seven for a lot of this game um but uh, but still, I think you know. I think it was certainly the right call. Pick up the Zillion here, who is very nice under this board, and we pick up our first Jinx, which is fantastic. I'm gonna use the remover here, beautiful, to to make sure that we have that extra remover for when we need it. And yeah, I imagine the Jinx is gonna get onto the board pretty soon. We also haven't been stacking Sugarcraft early, which is a little bit unfortunate, but that's just life. We do get a redemption here if we want it, and then maybe. I don't know, what would a, a Shoujin be? I guess we'll see. There's the Olaf and the Jinx here for the six Hunter on this board. Six Hunter, fantastic, but obviously a little bit hard. 
Uh, he does end up actually skipping Bard there, which I'm not really sure. Maybe his idea is that, yeah, I just, I can't play for, for Bard right now. I mean, I just need to play for a better setup. And yeah, he does end up, wow, he even doesn't even send the IE onto Jinx. He just makes these items onto Olaf with the idea. I mean, I think this makes a lot of sense that by the time we get to Carousel, we're gonna get a Jinx item here. I don't have to burn remover. And Olaf with the IE is actually probably more solid. Um, okay. I don't, I think you just want item collector here. We actually have a, a decent amount of items, especially because Hunter Emblem gave us an item, Bramble gave us an item. Um, so I think it's just item collector here. Um, we don't really have anyone to put Gracious on. LDP, I just hate this augment, honestly. Uh, Comet Caster, I imagine, isn't that good. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, we can we can just do a, a quick stats check on just Jinx 3. Obviously, this isn't like everything 3.30. And what was the other one I was thinking of? Item Collector here. Yeah, I mean, the statistics certainly agree with Greya here. And, uh, and you know, I'm nothing if not a stats checker. All right. The roll down here for Jinx 2, I think, is quite important. There is an Olaf. Yeah, he's, he's skipping his bards with the idea that I can't actually play bard right now. I just have to play this version of the board, just 3 Frost. And bard's only going to be on level up. But we rolled down to 20 gold and we didn't find a Jinx 2. This is actually like really, really, really bad for Greya in this spot. You should certainly have Jinx 2 at this point in the game. He's Jinx paired here. At least he has four Wukongs right now, but no Jinx 2 is going to mean that some of these fights that he should win, he's going to end up losing, which is really scary. Um, he's also looking at the Sugarcraft. Maybe like he's regretting not uh, having it in, but I don't know. There's Olaf 2 though, at least. Okay, okay. So we got, uh, this is like, a, oh, and there's the Jinx 2 on, the, on that last roll. Okay. Very, very big pickup here, Jinx 2 and the Olaf 2. We had to roll pretty deep to find that Jinx 2, so it's going to be a while before we get to Jinx 3. We're going to be stuck on 7 for forever, basically. Um, but the upside is obviously that now we have a really, really solid board for this stage. It'd be I, I would be surprised if we lose uh, maybe any fights. I could see us winning all these fights unless we fight someone with a really, really strong 2-star forecast board. But we have a 2-star forecast of our own. His name is Olaf, and he's jumping around the board. Um, so... Going into Carousel here, Last Whisper and Gwinsu are the opportunities uh, to be made here. This also makes a lot more sense thinking back to why he ended up taking that bow on Jinx. In hindsight, it was so he would have more options for Jinx. Uh, he could even go red buff on this Jinx. I think that's probably completely fine. So we'll see. We do have red buff open in his option and Renan's. And yep, he is going to grab the red buff here. I imagine this just becomes a slam. I doubt we greed that hard. Ooh, whoa, this is, I mean, it makes sense though, right? Olaf is stronger than Jinx right now. Why not move the Renans over to him and then just make the red buff onto Jinx? Wow, I mean, Renan's a better item on Jinx in general, but a really, really, uh, I, I mean, I like this. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I, you know, my thought process would just keep the Renans on Jinx because she's such a, she's such a good user of it. But I mean, look at this damage chart. Olaf's doing so much more damage than Jinx. So I think it's a great call from, uh, from Greya there to, to move items over. Also, oh my God, look at this Gwen, who is that? I didn't see who that was with that Gwen, but that Gwen is horrifying. Um, all right, it's lucky fine. A little bit more econ here, seems solid. Um, one of the things you have to uh, be really careful for when you play this comp is killing your first unit with six hunter. Getting that that first kill is hugely impactful. So you're gonna see Greya scouting every single round, making sure that he is on the same side as a weak frontline here, beautiful here. If he's on the left side, he aggros onto the Rakan, which is terrible. On the right side, we blow up that Nasus and boom, the fight is so easy. That just being on the correct side when you you play this kind of uh when you play vertical hunter is insanely important but yeah i mean this has been a beautiful early game from uh from Greya. i mean he is 77 hp the only downside like we talked about is only four jinx only four um wukongs at this point we're probably not hitting three stars until mid stage five maybe end of stage five which which means our board's gonna fall off a bit but the the hope is that you know we can get there uh that's a lot of gold for minions which is not bad that's also a belt which could be uh, I mean, I guess it can't really be a last Jinx item, so we'll see. I guess it could end up being like Sterax Olaf and you move Renan's back. Um, the only downside is we don't get a uh, a heal, or we don't have an armor shred item on this board, but I mean, I think this slam makes perfect sense here. Uh, rolls a little bit for a charm here. Can't, once again, like roll it to zero just yet. And we now have two Jinx, two Wukongs, and 50 gold. So the spot's starting to turn up, but yeah, fighting a two-cost real comp like this, we're always going to lose to this board right now just because we we haven't hit our three stars yet. It's just so tough to get through everything. I mean, this is honestly, uh, you can be pretty happy about this loss here. Three unit loss versus a board that is way stronger than ours right now, I think makes a lot of sense. There's a bard, which he is going to hold for the potential level up down the line. Um, rolls, and we're, we're getting pretty close there. All fives, I don't think is, 
really worth uh, picking up. Yeah, so I think we're just gonna chill here. He's not even gonna roll for another charm here just because of the idea that he can sell and make 50 gold here, which I think makes sense. But yeah, obviously Bard, uh, a fantastic level up on this board. If we can finally get there, the downside is that we have not stacked a single stack of sugar craft this game. Um, so getting two sugar craft in is gonna be pretty inconsequential, but hey, we're winning fights without it in. So hey, not bad. Um, all right, gonna continue to roll here. It'll be interesting to see. See, Fingers doesn't do anything here. It's gonna be interesting to see um, when he opts to start like really, really dipping. Oh, he's, I think he's just using this to look, right? I mean, there's no way, yeah. There's no way he would have done this this entire time, especially when you're playing, you have an Olaf too, right? Oh, but actually, this is this is kind of sad. Uh, the, the fact that he was spending this time like thinking about traits, he actually ends up on the wrong side here. Like we talked about, the fact that he ends up aggroing onto the Rakan first is horrible. If he had aggroed onto the Tarek first, he actually would have had a, a much better fight in the spot. So, I mean, it just goes to show how much positioning it can uh, affect this comp. Uh, Itemwise, we don't have much left. We still need the last Whisper, right? So uh, he's just gonna take the Jinx though. Okay, I mean, Edge of Night, obviously a good item, um, but he, he wants the Jinx more than he cares about uh, Having armor shred here, right? There's no armor shred on this board, and he actually turned down the last whisper just for uh to, to try to get to Jinx three faster. And now I think, yeah, rolling. Ooh, seven Jinx here, and we're not going to roll in deep here. 46 HP. So Gray's call in this spot is I know I'm probably gonna lose one of these fights. Oof, and we're we're opposite side of the Seraphine, which is really scary, but I don't wanna dip below 50 here just because I know I need to hit Wukong and Jinx. If I roll to zero here and find Jinx three, my spot looks really, really scary. Down to 30 HP though, we need to hit soon or we actually run the risk of going like fifth this game. Um, so yeah, there's another Wukong, which is big. That augment is very, very good. It really incentivizes you to not deep dip that deep, but one off Jinx, he is just gonna go for it. Uh, picks up the Lesser Champion Duplicator Charm as well, which is huge. And one off Wukong, he doesn't find, oh my God, he finds it the last second. Oh, and that is the diff for the new, uh, for the new uh, combining animation. Oh my God, wait, our Jinx walked up here. I don't know what she aggroed onto here, but she ended up walking up into the middle of the board. The Wukong's taking so long. Oh my God, that roll then was so crucial there. If he had not hit that, like uh, the, the spot, I, I mean, he actually might've been looking at a, a bot four. Beautiful, beautiful roll down from, uh, from Greya, making the call to actually just send it to zero. Picking up that Lesser Champ duplicator was so, so nice as well on the roll down. Those, those quick roll downs actually like, oh, I add insult to injury. Just gets a random Wukong from minions there, uh, which is kind of hilarious. Um, okay. Now still no armor shred item here. Ugh. I mean, I was gonna say, okay, okay, so this is the idea, BT and then move IE over. That's that's very smart, yeah, okay. So this is definitely best, getting some healing onto the Olaf and uh, and getting an IE onto Kog'Maw, which is not bad. I think that's very, very smart. All right, we're fighting a pretty strong board and this guy's got Tremors, such an annoying charm to play into. So, oof, we're gonna take a big loss here. Okay, at least it's a top four, um, but man, I mean, still, I would say the fact that he, ooh, scope expansion, okay. Um, I would say the fact that we battled this game into a top four from how bad that uh, that roll down for Jinx looked, the fact that we were 20 gold, only two Jinxes, um, I really think, I mean, th this is why a player like Rhea uh, has such a good top four, he has such a good win rate, is that even games like this that look pretty low roll, he still manages to turn to top four as though I think... <sighs> This is really nice positioning. Olaf jumps to backline. Oh my God. He actually almost won that fight through positioning. Really, really smart stuff. Oh, two HP off, man. That's so, so rough. I mean, if he had just killed a couple more units, it's so tough. I mean, it's really, really smart that he does this positioning versus Seraphine, right? To make sure that Jinx doesn't get sniped by Seraphine. Even moves the Twitch up here so that he doesn't, uh, like the, the rest of the board doesn't get hit. It was such a good try. Uh, but still, I think a, a fantastic game showcasing how even when you have a, a pretty bad uh, roll down in a spot like that, roll down could not find Jinx 2. Uh, he eventually found it, of course, but he was so low gold that it took him so long to find Jinx 3 and Wukong 3. Um, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, that, that's why players like this, uh, that's that's how players like this, you know, have such good performances that they're very consistent. They're always, 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 uh, you know, playing playing for their outs. I really love the the um, the decision to not like overroll in a spot like this as well. The fact that he didn't roll it down really, really deep. The fact that he waited until he was really close to Jinx 3 and then sent it and it allowed him to hit Jinx 3 and Wukong 3 in the same round. If he had rolled the round earlier, this game would have been a fifth. So really, really well played, very great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Twitch, all my other links down below. Thank you guys again for watching.